Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, welcome. Now, not long ago, I had to compose for a documentary series, which is forthcoming, don't know when it's coming out, um, but I had to make, I think, over 50 original pieces of music. In another video that I posted about um, inspiration and things like that, I was kind of complaining that I had to get back into audio uh, composition or you know, uh, writing cues, and I was like really stuck on the inspiration aspect. A couple people in the comments were like, you should check out this tool called Scalar. Now I, in my stubborn kind of thought process, thought that I knew what this thing was and it wasn't for me. Truth is, I, would think, I was thinking about another product, I think called Captain Chords, which is more for EDM folks. This tool, after having played around with it for a long time and using it a lot on the documentary series, has been a total lifesaver, game changer for me, someone who doesn't have a ton of music theory and just wants to get started really quickly with an idea. I cannot thank folks enough in the community that left notes about me having to check this uh, this tool out because it's been invaluable and it will never leave another session that I'm working on again. That's what I want to do in this video is welcome people to it in case you've heard about it or haven't heard about it or downloaded it and I've never opened it up. Um, I'm not going to show you everything that it can do because I don't know everything that it can do. I just want to show you at a very basic and high level what it can do and what it's done for me. And perhaps folks can leave some comments and links to other tutorials uh, of people that have done this because I still want to dig in. And I find that some of the educational resources available for this product are a bit scattered across the web. So if anyone has any more, you know, like go check out this video or whatever, please let me know. Um, but without further ado, let's just walk through some of the basic functionalities of Scalar. So we see it before us now. I've opened it up right now as an instrument, but you can also have it as a MIDI uh, tool that can control another sample library. So I want to get that out of the way now. If you have it um, and you just want to use it because it has its own sounds, you can do that. But if you want it to control something else, a sample library that you love, either from Sign or from Contact, it can do that too. So right now I have it open as its own instrument and we see that here it's got a felt piano um, sound. I'm just going to close out of this and we're going to start kind of from like the main uh, page here. Actually, let me just instantiate it from scratch. It can detect and analyze something if you play and then suggest a key. Um, like it says here, explore, perform, build. What I want to do is just start with something that I'm uh, always starting with, so I go to uh, a skill here, let's say F minor, I can play it. Here's a pentatonic, here's a blues hexatonic scale. So I love the F minor scale, I've double clicked it and we have a number of chords here below. I just click and get a preview. By pressing this B key, I can bind these to uh, the C2. So with one finger, I can get these chords that we see below here. If I want to go from F and jump right to the G uh, note, which is going to be C minor, I can do that. And back down to F minor. Now from here, I can switch up. Um, a number of aspects of these chords. I can go here and instead of triads, they can be sevenths. They could be ninths, elevenths. Let's go back to triads. I could switch up the voicings as well. So now we see diatonic over here. Voicing two. Voicing three, if I click through this menu, seven's inverted. Variations over here give us more controls. And I, th I don't think I want to go too much deeper um, into some of these parameters here, although you can see that we can go much deeper. I can change up the octave over here. I can just have it play what it's going to sound like. I can also go over here and change the instrument type. So its default is felt piano, which sounds pretty darn good. But if we want, we can have an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. 
or we can have acquire. I tend to stay on piano because piano is often where I myself um, start an idea and then I'll take it to MIDI and have it, you know, trigger strings or, or whatever. So let's just stay on felt piano. So staying with the sevenths inverted diatonic thing, I can also switch up how these notes, um, you know, play and trigger over here in this perform section. So when I click it, it starts to flash in blue and I can go over here to performances. I could have arpeggios, strumming, and there's a number of really cool expression um, kind of articulations here, performances, phrases, bass, melody sequences, strum sequences. So I can go over here to strumming, for example, and let's go to down and let's go to slower. And now let's play this opening F minor seven. Sounds very nice. Pressing this humanize function here will uh, mess with the velocity so we get a more human tone to how these kind of keys hammer down. Keys lock is really interesting because when I press this, you'll notice these little uh, padlock things appear over some of the notes. If I disengage this, let's say that I want to play with my right hand over some of the chords that I'm working with. It's obviously not going to be in the same key as F minor if I move up and down the keys here. Some of the notes are going to be not within the scale, right? I'm going to play the same sequence but with keys lock on and now everything that I do is going to be within the scale. Very nice, right? So you can see very quickly, we can not just get chords, but have them perform and hit the notes, so to speak, uh, in ways that we want. I can also go down here and create a custom pattern. So let's say that I like F minor seven. I wanna start with that. I've dragged it down here, but I'm not really sure which the next one that I wanna uh, do. I could also go over here to suggest and it will take a look at the initial chord that we're building off of the F minor seven and suggest a couple of different chords for us. And I can either have it go tonal or per scale. And this is really handy if you wanna kind of break out of a typical pattern or something that's not very exciting and just move over to something else. So let's say uh, we're starting with this, sounds like that. Sounds kind of nice. So now I can have it suggest, continue suggesting from the F minor, or I could have it suggest uh, from this guy here, uh, which I believe it kind of triggered automatically. So what did this sound like again? All right, let's see what these guys sound like. Sounds nice. Uh, let's see. That sounds nice. And let's try, nope see if that works. So now what I can do is close this out and go over here and bind these to C2. So now these guys are not bound to C2. We have this um, in the row here kind of locked and loaded. So we're going to keep strumming, perform, uh, humanize, keep all that stuff on. And let's just hear what this sounds like. So we can go in a different direction here actually and suggest from this F major. That sounds kind of cool. So let's close that out and start over here. So 
just to show you we can get some ideas for different directions really quickly and just kind of keep moving. Um, and of course, if I want to bring these chords onto my uh, actual track, all I have to do is drag them like this and they'll show up. And there's probably actually some uh, drag functionality that is going to make this a lot faster, but I'm just doing it the manual way. So where it gets really interesting is let's say that I just want the uh, Scalar 2 instrument to come up with something for me and then I can build off from there. I don't want to kind of individually pick and you know all, all my stuff and suggest, which it's still a robust kind of feature set, but let's say that I just want to go through something prearranged in a key that I like. One of the cool features here is to go to Songs and then we can find a number of genres here. And let's say that we want to go for cinematic and let's go for uh, sad ending because I'm all about sad endings. So we can see that it's generated a number of chords up here. Now it's kept our initial um, kind of MIDI, you know, structure here, perform, keys lock, humanize, strumming, but we have some new chords up here. Let me actually just find that. So let's say I like that, but I actually want to change this to performances. And let's see if we can get something that sounds nice. Let's try Vivace. Not really liking that. Let's go back to a basic performance. So we've also got access to a number of artists over here and I haven't explored these too much, but let's see what we can get here. Uh, Carl Cox, we know who that is. Let me see Temper Trap. So you can explore the different presets over here. How I want to kind of end this video is go over to, let's say an instrument that I, you know, I know that I want Scalar to control. This is how I was actually using it a lot in the documentary that I worked on. So we can go over here and you can see that I have Spitfire Chamber Strings. I have a Flotando, long Flotando uh, articulation. And we can go up here. And uh, one of the things I was doing was using this uh, mod tab here and using this preset, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce to get a little bit of variation within, within a key. Let me actually start from scratch if I can. So start with F minor. I'll go here. And then what I'm going to do is get a leading. It's the same one. So let me pop this down here. Now my music theory isn't great, but this is me just kind of like checking out um, a kind of, you know, notes within the harmony of this F minor scale. And let's bring this in here. this back over Put this over here so what I can do is just remove these guys here and now I've created a pretty nice little, and we'll do keys lock, a pretty nice little sequence down here.
So hopefully this gives you a sense of how easy it is to quickly come up with um, expressive and interesting chord progressions and also manipulate them in a way that makes them sound like they're being played by a human. Um, again, this tool was totally invaluable for me on the series that I worked on, and I might have not done the best kind of justice at showing you everything that it can do. I'm still scratching the surface with it. Um, and anyway, I just wanted to come back to the channel, show you guys this thing. It's by Plugin uh, Boutique. They're the guys that make this, and big thanks to them for sending this over my way a couple of months ago, and I was in the thick of writing. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And if there's something else I don't know about from this tool or another kind of tool in this family, uh, like another scale or two, please let me know in the comments too. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.